Howdy folks, good day to you. We got a 2005 Toyota Highlander miniature SUV here. We're moving into customer service. That was loud. We're moving into customer service territory on this one. Uh, I guess my shop put some brakes on this uh, six, seven months ago, something like that. And it ended up at a Toyota dealership. I guess the owner's boyfriend guy took it over there. Uh, they told them that they needed a bunch of a uh, bunch of brake work, something about grinding noises, calipers locking up, um, oil leaks, etc. Uh, there was a there was a lot on the inspection. Um, uh, from my point of view, the inspection looks kind of pencil whipped. Uh, I see the consistencies and all the marks. I just think they went through the checklist of common stuff and said, "Hey, you need all this." So. Uh, they didn't do any repairs at the other facility. They brought it back here. Um, I'm just gonna go through this and pretend that I don't know any of that information to be objective, and we're gonna evaluate this vehicle uh, top to bottom, front to back, and um, see if we can't confirm anything that has been suggested uh, from Toyota. So stay tuned, this right here is gonna be a really good video. Okay, one of the first complaints on their list here says customer states they're hearing a grinding noise uh, in the rear while braking. Brakes were recently serviced. Diagnose and advise. So let's see, they said, see the complaint says rear brakes making noise and the dealership recommended front brake calipers saying that they were, they were locking up. Yeah, let's see, possible lines need to be replaced because of rust. No lubrication on rear brake pads. All right, looks like they put an oil filter in it and cabin filter. Yeah, that looks like about it. So a uh, customer complained of rear brake noise and they tried to sell them front brakes, front calipers and hoses. So let's, um, let's go drive it. We'll attempt to duplicate the noise and then um, we'll revisit those front calipers and see uh, see if there's any validity to their claims. See, this is one cool thing about doing what I do out in the shop as opposed to working the front desk and uh, directly dealing with most of the customers is I get to be completely objective no matter what's going on. Even if it's something that I worked on before, I still get to be completely object objective. And I get to do that because anything, and I'm not saying I did the work on this because I don't think that I did, but like, let's say I was the person who had recently done uh, rear brakes on this particular car. I can still approach this as if this were a car that I've never touched before. Uh, being objective and removing emotion and, and that deep feeling of personal responsibility out of things, uh, for me, really helps me do a better job because a lot of guys get wrapped up in the emotion of a situation. For example, if you work on a car and something happens later on down the road and then they come back and the customer perceives that as, as, a, as a comeback or as if you did something wrong, a lot of guys will get internally worked up and they feel some kind of responsibility uh, for the condition of that machine. Now, I'm not saying if you're directly responsible for something that you shouldn't feel that way, but uh, until those things are, are proven and you know investigated, you've got to be objective with your work because if not you're going to you're, you're going to back yourself into a corner and it's usually a downward spiral when that happens i hope i communicated that properly if i did let me know and if i didn't let me know powering down okay one thing that was mentioned was a oil leak from a valve cover so we have popped is the hood latch Let's go inspect that first since this thing is still on the ground. The tried and true 3.3 liter. Well, let's see about an oil leak. You guys see anything? No, I don't think so. Some out of that cam button right there. Okay, I do see some residual oil here out of this rear valve cover uh, I wouldn't call that a leak and uh, like I stated earlier I do believe that's already been replaced to stop an actual leak that's probably leftover oil from the original leak we will investigate further from the bottom side let's see if there's any grinding while free spinning this wheel 
Mm -hmm. I do hear some noise. Sounds like vacuum plate noise. I don't know if I would classify that as grinding. Okay. Further inspection required. Regardless of what my first impression is, you can't do a brake inspection with the wheels on. Let's see what we've got with regards to sticking calipers. Yeah, I don't know about that. If they were sticking, we wouldn't be able to, uh, to turn that rotor. Furthermore, these probably be hot spotted and just colored from the excessive heat buildup. Let's pull this caliper off just to just to make sure. We'll check the slide pins and, and everything too. I mean, that's a little crusty, but can't say that they're, uh, it's got a stuck caliper. It does not have stuck pads. It does have semi-stuck slide pins. Yeah, that's uh, not wanting to move. I mean, it's not terrible, but these really should slide. At this point, they're just rotator pins and not slide pins. They're supposed to slide. That's not cool. All right. Well, that's a problem. You see why you can't do a brake inspection without pulling the wheels off? Yeah, I am kind of going a little excessive on this one just because of the circumstances, but... if I can't get this one out. It's not seized, but all that lube in there is, is dried up. Here it comes. Pop. Yeah. It's more like a paste rather than a grease. Okay, it looks like the right front side is in similar condition. The calipers are not seizing. Pull this one off and check the slide pins over here too. That one moved. That one's good. That one's a little rough right there. Even so, it's not, well, it's not great, but it's not stuck or seized. Okay. In the interest of being thorough, I'm just going to compress these pistons slightly just to confirm that they are in fact not seizing. Okay, that's going in no problem. So, we do not need calipers. Let's go check the driver's side right quick, Mike. What's up, buddy? Good morning.
Again, that piston is uh, going in no problem. It does not have stuck calipers. It's got dry sliders, but that is all. Ooh, break time. The paycheck collection truck is here. He doesn't know I'm filming. What up, buddy? You wanna be on the internet? Oh, say hi to YouTube. What you got? Ooh, toys. It's like Disneyland for people with jobs. Where is it? He's got what I need. Yeah, big rivet gun. Mine. Drive line sockets that I didn't really need, but I wanted them. And a really, really big rivet gun, because I did need this. I needed this for like years. Ow! Paper cut. Oh. Ooh, that's pretty. Nice. It's like, I dubbed this the assault rivet gun. Sweet. Okay, back to the task at hand. Who am I kidding? Can't go back to the boring brake job without demonstrating the awesomeness of the rivet gun. And I need to see how it works. Ooh, nice. Second pull. Three pulls. Nice, that'll do. Yep. Okay, fun's over. Let's get back to what we were doing. Hear that noise? That's either backing plate or parking brake. Rust inside of the rotor. Okay, so we have no polished metal marks on this backing plate here. I don't believe that the backing plate was scraping. Look, here's some polished mark right there. It's scraping on the rust. That's, uh, that's what the deal is here. Okay, um, let's lift this up one more time and inspect for that oil leak uh, from the bottom side just to make sure that there's nothing else going on. Okay, I did find a power steering leak at this uh, at the rack out of this driver's side bellows boot. A um, little bit of residual oil on the back of the engine. Uh, let's check this other side of the rack over here. Oh, there's a power steering leak at the pump. Maybe that's what they thought. There's another smaller power steering leak at this bellows. That's coming out of the steering gear. Okay. And up top. All right, yeah, I think we're, we're in good shape here. I'm gonna go report my findings and we're gonna see what they want to do. do, -do, 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 -do. Mustang. All right, so it's hard to see, but I, I do see some oil right around this general location here in the front of the engine. But if we go up top, again, we can see the valve covers very dry. But if we go down a little farther, let me get you guys down there. It looks like a filter. is where the oil was coming from, or it's just uh, some spillage from the last oil change. I'm gonna reach down in there if I can, and just make sure that filter's tight. I, mean, I got a little bit of a turn out of it, but uh, I think it was pretty tight. Either way, I'll spray that off for them just to, just to make sure we don't have a leak. Okay, a couple things are gonna happen here. I'm gonna knock all the rust off of uh, off of these drums inside of this rotor. 
and I will do such things with some circular sandpaper. Uh, they call these a flap wheel. It's basically just a bunch of little squares of sandpaper attached to the rotary wheel. And uh, it flaps around and sands whatever you're trying to sand. That was moderately effective, but I wasn't getting the pressure that I wanted on it, so we'll do it over here on the car. solve that noise problem. Okay, let's see how these were oriented. Is the noise gone? Noise is gone. I win. Silence. Okay, let's get this caliper back on. I'm gonna pull one of these slides out, remove the caliper from the bracket, and I'm gonna lube everything. Just because this is awfully crusty, and we don't want it to make any noise. There's really no parts recommendation here that's worthy so there's nothing that really needs to be replaced. It just needs some, uh, some maintenance action. And of course, I'll repeat the procedure on the other side. Really? We're going the right way? Yep. That was tight. Gross, look at that. Okay. Yeah, we need some lube on this. This is, uh, this is bad. Let's just go ahead and pull these out. These need wire wheeled. Looky here, there's supposed to be a piece of rubber on that, it's kind of like a vibration insulator, and it is not here. And I also don't feel it inside of the bracket. So I'm gonna see what I can do about ordering a set of slide pins to just go ahead and replace these. Additionally, this rust right here is kind of built up pretty crusty-like. 
And it couldn't hurt to just get some new slide pins. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm trying to find some, some uh, new pins for these. While they're looking for that, I'm gonna get this uh, other side taken apart, cleaned up. Hmm, again, missing that rubber insulator. shows it shows those were sticking all right let's move in for our close-up mr. DeVille and reverse click these off Give it back. There. Yep, very similar. Bunch of rust. Okay, it's not the rest of this garbage off. This one's gonna need a round two. Yeah, that's gross. I don't like it. Round two, fight. Nice. We're good. All right. Caliper bracket and pads are going back. Hey. What? Uh, I don't know. Something about the speedometer is erratic or some shit like that. Final torquage. Ooh, did you hear my ratchet slip? Ah. Whoa, yeah, it slips all right. Warranty time. Can I move it? Damn, that was a broken yeah, ratchet and a flashlight gravity moment. Try again. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's done. It's okay, there's two sets of teeth. We'll just put it in reverse. We'll do the first ever forward reverse clicks. <laughs> yeah, it works that way. There. 
Come off. There. Okay. All right, waiting game until those slide pins show up, and, uh, and then I can throw this stuff back together. I'm not going to do any more recording of the fronts because it's going to be the same procedure. Uh, new slide pins with a little bit of lube right here. I'll blow all this nasty stuff out. Uh, polish up the rust as best I can, and uh, then we're going back together, and this one's all done. Having said that, I'm going to go ahead in this video right now, kind of early. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time because I'm actually going to make a second video on this. Um, I'm going to pull that intake manifold off of uh, off the engine, and we're going to pull that back valve cover off because I, when I was looking around at that power steering pump or what I thought was the power steering leak, I noticed some oil above that, but I can't see what's going on up there, so I'm going to go ahead and, and plop that thing off at, for a better inspection. Um, uh, I'm already probably going to just warranty replace these uh, uh, those valve cover gaskets. Um, they've got like a month left on the warranty. It's been almost a year or so since that job was last done. And um, like I said, we're in customer service territory here, so I want to do everything that I can do to, uh, to make sure we retain our customer and that a good job gets done here. So I don't want them leaving with a bad taste in their mouth, especially since a, uh, uh, another establishment local has kind of bashed us a little bit on this. Um, I don't like that and I don't like bad reputation. So I'm gonna do everything within my ability to, to counteract that. So it, it's worth it regarding finances and what the company has to pay to just kind of redo the job again. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna make a second video on that because that's about a time three hour job up there, loud noises. Uh, so this one's getting cut off. Um, as always, I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. I sure hope to see you over in the next one. If you'd like to go over to the next one right now, just click the link above or check in the video description down below and you will find the link to part two for the valve cover redo. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later.